Welcome to the Canon EOS 30D Tutorial DVD. This set is the definitive guide for your camera. This DVD covers beginning and intermediate topics and touches on some of the more advanced features. The advanced DVD goes into more detail on the advanced features of your camera. Our goal is to both instruct and entertain. Now this DVD is divided by chapter, so feel free to use your DVD remote to skip forward or back as it may be helpful. Section 1, getting started with your camera in full auto mode. Now before you can take any pictures, you have to mount a lens, charge and insert a battery, and insert a compact flash memory card. To mount or install a lens, hold the camera body with one hand and the lens in the other. Then line up either the red or white guide points on the camera and lens. And insert the lens into the camera like this. Caution, take great care not to scratch the lens by allowing it to make contact with anything. To charge your battery, insert it into the charger like this. Then plug the charger into the wall jack. Tip, it takes about three hours to fully charge your battery. Another tip, your battery will allow you to take about 600 pictures. To insert your charged battery, simply open the battery compartment and slide the battery into position like this. Note, always power off your camera before inserting or replacing a battery or memory card. Now another tip about your battery, if you want it to keep its charge longer in cold weather, simply put it in your pocket and keep it warm. To insert your memory card, simply open the memory card slot and insert the card like this. A tip, your camera uses either Type 1 or Type 2 compact flash memory cards. These cards are available in varying sizes from 32 megabytes to 4 gigabytes from either Canon or from third-party providers. The larger the card's memory capacity, the more images you'll be able to store before either deleting or copying the images to another device, like your PC's hard drive. It's necessary to format your compact flash card to work with your camera before you can start taking pictures. Start by pressing Menu. Then turn the quick control dial until you've selected format. Then press the set button. The options cancel and OK will appear. Rotate the quick control dial again to select OK. And then press the set button a final time. When the compact flash card formatting is complete, Press the shutter button to return to normal camera mode. Caution, don't reformat your card unless you've already copied the images to another device. Reformatting your card will erase all the images. Another tip, your camera will operate faster if you periodically reformat your memory card rather than simply deleting images from it to free space for more picture taking. To operate your camera, turn the power switch to on and turn the mode dial to full auto, indicated by the green rectangle. Now set the focus mode switch on your lens to AF. Aim your camera at the subject and make sure at least one of the nine focus points is over the subject you want to be in focus. Press the shutter halfway down until a focus confirmation light shows green and you see a focus point flash red. Then press the shutter the rest of the way down to take a picture. Your picture will show on the LCD for about two seconds. Practice taking pictures in full auto mode to get a general feel for using your camera. To 
To view a picture, press the play button, then rotate the quick control dial left or right to step through the images that are stored on your memory card. To delete an image that is being displayed on the LCD, press the delete button. Confirm that you want to delete the image. Practice viewing the picture on your LCD each time you take a picture. And remember, with digital cameras, there's no film expense, so take as many pictures as you want and simply delete the images that don't turn out. To conserve your battery, the camera will automatically hibernate within about a minute if you haven't pressed any buttons during that time. Just press the shutter to awaken it again. Section 2, Concepts of Digital Cameras. Now that you know how to use your camera in full auto mode, allow us to discuss some of the basic concepts of digital cameras and photography so you have a foundation to learn how to use your camera in much more powerful and creative ways. To begin, a digital camera is comprised of four main parts. First, a lens which magnifies an image, focuses that image, and determines how much or how little light will enter the camera. Second, a shutter assembly, which reflects the image into the viewfinder so you can see it, and which opens when you press the shutter button for a very precise period of time in order to expose the image sensor to the focused image. Third, an image sensor is a silicon chip that, like film in older cameras, is exposed to an image and precisely records that image so it can be converted into a digital file for storage on a memory card. Fourth, a memory card stores images until the images are archived on a PC hard drive or burned to a CD and deleted from the memory card. A tip, it may be convenient to use multiple memory cards. When one card is full, simply insert a new one and continue shooting pictures. Memory cards can be used to store images either permanently or temporarily, although the least expensive way to archive your images is to burn them to a high quality CD and then store them in a safe, cool, and dry place. To remove your memory card, simply open the memory card cover and press the eject button like this. Caution, handle your memory card with care and never remove it if the red access light on the camera is on. You'll want to get into the habit of protecting your great photos on your camera from accidentally being erased. To do this, simply press the menu button and then use the quick control dial to select the protect option and press the set button. Then scroll through your images using your quick control dial and press the set button for each image you want to protect. The next most important elements of good photography are angle of view and magnification. Obviously, by moving around or moving your subject around, you can shoot from slightly above, below, and side to side, and closer or farther away to achieve just the right look. Close-ups are great, and you want to include the eyes, well lit. Sometimes a full body shot, or shot from even farther back, can better help establish your location and situation, which may be what you want. The lens that you shoot with will also affect the general look of your picture and may be more practical and convenient to use than actually moving closer to or farther away from your subject. A telephoto lens will make things appear closer. This is said to have a long focal length. Common focal length for great portrait photography is about 100 millimeters. A normal lens is considered to be about what the human eye sees, something between 40 and 50 millimeters. This is said to have a normal focal length. A wide angle lens will make things appear farther away and will also distort the image in some interesting and fun ways. This is called a short focal length.
A zoom lens is very common and can move from one focal length to another by simply moving the dial. A great advantage of a digital SLR is that you can attach different lenses to your camera depending on your needs. There are more than 60 Canon EF lenses to choose from. You can also use third-party lenses that are compatible with the Canon EF mount. While you can use all of these lenses with your digital SLR, you need to understand that the lenses will be magnified by a factor of 1.6 times compared to your 35mm film SLR. The reason is that the image sensor is smaller than the 35mm film frame, so the sensor sees only the inner portion of what might be seen on 35mm. The result is great for telephoto lens use. Your 200mm telephoto lens will now function as a 320mm lens with your camera. The problem is using wide angle lenses. A 35 millimeter wide angle lens will show images at 55 millimeter, slightly larger than normal focal length. And an 18 millimeter lens will show images at 28 millimeters, still wide, but not nearly as wide in perspective. So before you go buying a 100 millimeter lens for portrait photography and a 50 millimeter lens for normal picture taking, Consider that your lens selection will be multiplied by 1.6 times in appearance with your camera. The final elements of a great photograph are composition and design. The placement of objects and the location within the frame is critical to make a photograph look finished and artistic. While one person's perception of art is different from another's, here are some general principles you'll want to consider. Showcase the main subject. You can make the subject stand out either by lighting, placement, focus, or background foreground elements. Practice seeing what these different principles can do for your photos. Again, keep in mind that digital cameras have no film operating costs, so take lots of pictures and do a lot of experimenting. Consider your orientation. Do you want a vertical or horizontal image, commonly called portrait versus landscape perspectives? Some subjects just work better as vertical, some as horizontal. It depends on the mood and purpose of your photo. Placing the horizon. The horizon is where the sky meets the land. Typically, a great photo will show the most important subjects in the upper portion of the frame where the eyes naturally want to look but sometimes the picture works best to divide the picture horizontally by the horizon and showing it higher or lower than center frame depending on the subject matter. Placing your subject or subjects off of center can sometimes create a more pleasing image. The rule of thirds advocates dividing your viewfinder into thirds, both horizontally and vertically, and then placing your most important subjects on one or more of the cross points. You'll notice that the eye lines for close-ups are often aligned with the top line. Remember to lock your focus and exposure to achieve the kind of balanced composition that you want. Section 3, Basic Principles of Digital Photography. Digital photography is based on several main concepts. By understanding these well, you'll be able to understand nearly every other photographic concept. Number one, exposure is the amount of overall lightness or darkness of a photographic image. If the camera has too little light, the exposure will be dark, and it will be hard for you to see the details in the image. If the camera has too much light, the image will be blown out, too white to see details.
exposure is controlled primarily by two things. A, the lens aperture or opening. B, the duration of the shutter opening or shutter speed. Aperture or opening, which is measured in f-stops. The smaller the number, the more open the lens and the more light will reach the sensor to make the exposure light. B, the duration of the shutter opening or shutter speed measured in fractions of a second. The longer the shutter speed, the more light will reach the sensor and hence the lighter the image. One way to better understand the relationship of aperture and shutter speed on exposure is with an analogy. Consider the proper amount of light or exposure to be like a full bucket of water. Then consider a water tap from which you will fill the bucket to be the aperture or opening on your lens. Finally, consider your camera's shutter speed to be like the amount of time you will leave the water tap turned on. The more the tap is open, the more water will come through the hose into the bucket, and hence the shorter amount of time you will need the tap to be open. Conversely, if the tap will only open a small amount and water is only trickling into the bucket, you'll need to leave the water turned on for a much longer period of time. An interesting and important note is that shutter speed not only affects exposure, but it also affects clarity during action. A fast shutter speed will freeze a moving subject in your picture, whereas a slow shutter speed will appear to blur a moving object. Fast shutter speeds are therefore useful for taking pictures of sporting events. Slow shutter speeds are useful for taking pictures of waterfalls or car lights at night, giving a very interesting image. Just as important to understand are the secondary effects of aperture. A small aperture not only lets less light reach the image sensor, tending to make a darker exposure, but it also makes the entire scene from near to far appear more sharp or in focus. This optical phenomenon is called a long depth of field. This is useful when photographing a subject in front of a national monument where you want both in focus. A large aperture has the opposite effect. Only the subject of focus will be in focus. This is used extensively in portrait photography as it helps to literally focus attention on the subject. To see the depth of field, simply press the depth of field button Alternatively, take the picture, then review the LCD image. Zoom in or out on a portion of the image to inspect it closely and simply reshoot the picture if necessary. Knowing these principles, you can get just the look with the proper exposure you want. But enough photographic theory, let's show you how your camera makes it easy to do these things. On your mode dial, there are basic exposure settings, completely automatic and creative exposure settings, giving you varying levels of control over your exposure. Let's start with the basics, or what Canon calls the image zone modes. You have already used the full auto mode. The next one is the portrait mode. In portrait mode, the camera will set the aperture for wide open, creating a very short depth of field. Then it will adjust the shutter speed as necessary to estimate a proper exposure. This blurs the background as we discussed earlier. 
Once you set this mode, simply point and click. In the landscape mode, the camera will do the opposite, set the aperture for a very small opening, creating a very long depth of fill. Then it will adjust the shutter speed as necessary to achieve a proper exposure. This sharpens the background and foreground. The lens is focused at infinity, giving you a clear picture of faraway objects like mountains and landscapes. Again, point and click to become familiar with this auto exposure mode. A tip, the shutter speed can become quite slow in landscape mode, so be sure to steady your camera to avoid camera shake, which can make everything appear out of focus. The close-up mode is used to capture flowers and other small objects. Use this at the lens's minimum focusing distance. The sports mode is used when a fast shutter speed is required, which is done automatically by the camera. If you hold down the shutter in this mode, the camera will take pictures one after another in rapid succession. The flash will not fire in this mode. Now you're ready for the really big events in your daughter's life, or your son's. The night portrait mode is designed to photograph people in front of a landscape at night. In order for the subject to be well lit, the flash will fire. For the background to be in focus, the aperture is closed a bit. And in order to compensate for it all, the shutter will open for a relatively long period of time. So hold the camera very still or support it with a tripod. In flash off mode, the flash is turned off, so you can take pictures with proper exposure in places where a flash might usually fire, but might be inappropriate in your judgment, like a museum. Before we look at the creative manual zone modes, let's look briefly at one more photographic concept, aperture and shutter stop. Both shutter speeds and apertures have a standard series of settings called stops. Opening the aperture by one stop will double the light that reaches the sensor. Similarly, speeding the shutter by one stop will half the light that reaches the sensor. Therefore, by opening the aperture one stop and speeding the shutter by one stop, the exposure is kept constant. By opening the aperture two or three stops and speeding the shutter two or three will have the same effect on exposure. It will not change. Thus, the amount of light that reaches the sensor will remain constant. Your pictures will be just as light or dark as they were before. What does change? The depth of field and the subject's motion, frozen or blurred. The first creative zone mode, Program AE, indicated by the P on the mode dial, is like full auto. 
It will calculate a proper exposure for you, then allow you to easily rotate through and select different aperture shutter speed combinations to emphasize either depth of field or motion in your shot. To operate in this mode, set the power switch to on, set the mode dial to P, turn the main dial to scroll through the options until you find the one you want. Press the shutter all of the way down to take the picture. A tip, to keep the setting from changing, either immediately take another picture or hold the shutter halfway down. Something called the ISO setting of your camera also relates to image exposure. The ISO setting is a way to control the sensitivity of your image sensor chip. You can think of this like ASA ratings of film, 100, 400, and so on. The higher the number, the less light that is required to properly expose the image sensor. To set the ISO, simply press the drive ISO button. Then move the quick control dial until you find the setting you want and press the drive ISO button or the shutter button to return to normal camera mode. Another tip, keep in mind that the higher the ISO setting, the more noise or digital grain you will introduce into your images. In other words, a high ISO setting can make the image look lousy, full of artifacts or particles. The ISO setting will work only with the Creative Zone exposure modes. The next Creative Zone setting is Shutter Priority or TV mode. Use this to set the shutter speed yourself and let the camera calculate the aperture needed to make proper exposure. This is very handy when you know you want to either freeze or blur the motion of your subject. To use this setting, set the mode dial to TV and press the shutter halfway down. Turn the main dial to select a shutter speed as you watch the viewfinder or LCD readout. Press the shutter to take the picture. A tip, if the largest aperture, the smallest number, blinks, the exposure will be too dark. Select a slower shutter speed. Similarly, if the smallest aperture setting blinks, the exposure will be too light. Select a faster shutter speed. Another tip, remember that you can change the ISO setting to make the image sensor less or more sensitive and provide you with a different range of shutter speed options. The next Creative Zone setting is Aperture Priority or AV mode. Use this to set the aperture setting yourself and let the camera calculate the shutter speed needed to make proper exposure. This is very handy when you know you want to create a long or short depth of field.
To use this setting, set the mode dial to AV and press the shutter halfway down. Turn the main dial to select an aperture as you watch the viewfinder or LCD readout. Press the shutter to take the picture. A tip, if the 30, 30 second shutter speed indicator blinks, the exposure will be too dark. Select a larger aperture. Similarly, if the 4000 shutter speed indicator blinks, the exposure will be too light. Select a smaller aperture. Again, remember that you can change the ISO setting to make the image sensor less or more sensitive and provide you with a different range of options. Before we discuss the last two Creative Zone settings of your camera, let's show you a couple more useful exposure settings for your camera. By using a plus exposure compensation, the subject will get a bit brighter. By using a minus, it will get a bit darker. Even when using one of the basic or Creative Zone settings of your camera, you may find it useful to change the exposure up or down a bit. To use the exposure compensation feature of your camera, press the shutter button halfway down to activate the displays. Press the Exposure Compensation button. Rotate the quick control dial left or right with your thumb towards the plus or minus end of the exposure scale. Each unit on the scale represents an exposure stop, doubling or halving the exposure. Now press the shutter button the rest of the way to take the picture. Another tip, reset the exposure compensation to zero when you're done, otherwise it will remain in effect even if you've powered your camera off and back on again. A second useful exposure feature of your camera is the exposure focus lock feature. To use the auto exposure lock feature of your camera, press the shutter button halfway down to activate the displays. Aim the camera so as to center in your viewfinder the portion of the image that you want to be properly exposed. Press the AEFE -E lock button. Recompose your picture by zooming out or moving the camera one direction or another. Now press the shutter button the rest of the way to take the picture. Release the shutter and wait for the asterisk icon to disappear for the exposure lock to clear. Another tip, keep the shutter depressed partway down in order to keep that exposure setting. This feature will automatically measure just the center 9% of your viewfinder when locking the exposure. Note, if you have selected an autofocus point, the meter will be set to that point rather than the center autofocus point in your viewfinder. The most manual Creative Zone feature of your camera is the manual mode indicated by the M on the mode dial. Use this to set both the aperture and shutter speed setting yourself and let the camera display an exposure scale which indicates what your final exposure will be. This is very handy when you want complete control over your camera's exposure. To use this setting, set the mode dial to M and press the shutter halfway down. Turn the main dial to select a shutter speed. Turn the quick control dial to change the aperture. Move either the shutter speed or aperture until the exposure scale indicates that you are on zero or dead center position. Press the shutter and take the picture. A tip, if the exposure scale indicator is on negative one or two, your exposure is one or two stops darker than expected proper exposure. If the exposure scale indicator shows a positive one or two, your exposure is one or two stops lighter than expected proper exposure.
You cannot use either exposure compensation or auto exposure lock when using the manual mode of your camera. The last creative zone mode setting is the auto depth of field priority mode or ADEP mode. It will evaluate all of the focus points to determine an aperture that will give enough depth of field to keep them all in focus. To select this mode, switch your mode dial to ADEP and point and click. Note, you may need to hold the camera very still. Besides checking your LCD and actually viewing the image after it's taken, another great feature for checking exposure is by viewing the image's histogram graph. A histogram is a graph of all the highlights and shadows of your photo. It represents the range of brightness from shadows on the left to highlights on the right of a horizontal axis. Midtones are shown in the center. On the vertical axis, the magnitude from 0 to 255 of brightness is displayed. The higher the vertical line at any point along the horizontal axis, the greater the number of pixels that the image sensor captured in that range of shadows, midtone, or highlights. A histogram of a photo showing only a lot of pixels in the shadows range on the left side of the graph represents a picture that is mostly dark. And similarly, a histogram of a photo showing only a lot of pixels in the highlights range on the right side of the graph represents a picture that is mostly light. A well-exposed picture is typically one that has a fairly even distribution of pixels across the entire histogram. To see the histogram of an image, press the play button to review photos. Scroll to the photo whose histogram you want to see, press the info button. Press the info button again to return to normal play mode. Press the play button again or the shutter button to return to normal camera mode. Clearly, proper exposure is a major part of taking good pictures, and by changing the aperture and shutter speed, either with the automatic or manual settings, you can change the depth of field or the motion blur or sharpness while still keeping the exposure you want. The second most important principle of taking great pictures is image sharpness. Image sharpness is affected by several things, including lens focus, depth of field, camera shake, and digital noise. First of all, you may want to have a bit of motion blur in your image for aesthetic effect. In this case, you would experiment with a slower shutter speed. You may also want parts of your image to be sharp and other parts to be out of focus. For this, you would experiment with depth of field changes as already discussed. This section will talk about how to keep your image sharp when you intend it to be sharp. Let's talk about lens focus. Sometimes the autofocus feature of your camera will have problems, particularly in situations where there is low contrast, highly reflective or bright objects in backgrounds, or overlapping objects at different distances. To ensure that the right part of your subject is in focus, you may want to switch the lens to M for manual focusing mode, where you have full control over focus by simply moving the focus ring left or right. Note, even in manual focus mode, you can press the shutter button halfway down and a red dot flashes in the active AF point and the confirmation light shines in the viewfinder when focus is achieved. To stay in autofocus mode but gain a bit more control, you may find it helpful to lock your focus on a certain point before recomposing and taking the picture. To do this, with the focus switch on the lens set to AF for autofocus, simply press the shutter halfway down until the focus light and the point appear. Then, still holding the shutter halfway down, move the camera to recompose the picture and then depress the shutter the rest of the way down. Another way to get more control while still in autofocus mode is to select a focus point. That is, tell the camera which of the nine focus points it should focus on rather than the closest one, which may be its default behavior.
To set a focus point with the mode dial on any setting other than A depth, press the AF point selector button. Then turn the main dial to select the desired AF point. Then depress the shutter to take the picture. Another way to get a clear picture is to increase your depth of field, as we've already discussed, to cover the entire range of what you're trying to get in focus. That way, even if your lens focus is a bit off, you may still have a crystal clear image recorded by the sensor. Another cause of poor focus is camera shake, that is movement of the camera while the shutter is open, exposing the image sensor. Always steady the camera when you can. Holding the camera with two hands and pressing the viewfinder gently against your face will help. Lean against something if you can, and where possible, use a tripod, monopod, or even a bean bag to rest your camera on. You can also reduce camera shake by selecting a fast shutter speed. This keeps the image sensor from being exposed to shaking conditions more briefly. One general rule of thumb that you may find helpful is the rule of one over the focal length. For example, if your lens focal length is 300 millimeters, set your shutter speed to at least 1 300th of a second. If your focal length or zoom is set to 30 millimeter, you may get by with a shutter speed as low as 1 30th of a second or so. Canon's image stabilizer lenses do a remarkable job of taking out camera shake automatically. Digital grain or noise makes the image appear poor or out of focus. Don't enlarge an image too much, and if you know that you must enlarge an image, select a large file format as possible. To select a high resolution file format, press Menu. Highlight quality and press set. Highlight one of the high quality choices such as large. Then press menu or the shutter button to hide the menu. Too high of an ISO setting can create noise in your image. Underexposing your photos too much black will come across as gray or noisy. Don't underexpose your photos. Saving images in JPEG compression format creates some noise in the image. Also, repeatedly opening and resaving JPEG images can degrade the file quality. Save images in RAW format if possible. This is not compressed like JPEG. To select RAW file format, move the mode dial to one of the creative zone modes, such as aperture priority, press menu, highlight quality, and press set. Highlight RAW. Then press menu or the shutter button to hide the menu. Another way to keep noise out of your image is to shoot high contrast subjects. Gradual gradations, like the sky's changing blue colors, cause grain-like patterns in the image. Finally, to help keep noise out of your images, allow your camera to cool off before shooting more pictures. An overheated image sensor will add noise to your image. Your camera is capable of storing images in two file types, RAW, which is uncompressed, and JPEG, which is compressed and smaller. 
The raw file keeps more of the image data and is therefore a better quality image file. It can be edited with popular software packages like Adobe Photoshop. If you have plenty of memory space available, or if you plan to manipulate your photos in Photoshop, you'll want to shoot photos in RAW format. JPEG is a compressed file format. It retains an amazing amount of quality and can be edited with photo manipulation software also. Use this format if you have less space or don't need to do a lot of touching up of your photos. The number of photos available with a 512 megabyte memory in the RAW format is 50. In JPEG, it's 170. A third major ingredient of a good photo is to carefully choose the color of your surrounding light and tell your camera what color that light is. First, a bit about the color of light. While all light looks white to an untrained eye, each type of light, sunlight at daytime, sunlight in the shade or under cloudy conditions, light coming from a tungsten lamp or fluorescent fixture, are all composed of different colors. Daylight is more blue. If your camera thinks that you're photographing in daylight, but you are photographing in a setting that uses tungsten light, your image will look overly red. While all light looks white to an untrained eye, setting your white balance or telling your camera what the color of white light is will help your pictures have a proper coloring. Your camera will attempt to automatically determine the white balance, but you'll get better results if you set a preset white balance or by manually customizing your white balance, which will provide the very best results. Here is how you select a preset white balance. With the mode dial set to any creative zone, press and release the white balance button. Then turn the main dial to scroll through and highlight an available setting displayed on the LCD. Your flash will usually be a bit blue in color, more so than daylight, so set your white balance mode to flash when using the flash for great frontal lighting that is also compatible with the background's lighting and color temperatures. Here is how you set a custom white balance. With the mode dial set to any mode in the creative zone, focus manually on a white sheet of paper that fills at least the center 9% of your viewfinder. Then press the shutter button, press the menu button, highlight the custom WB option, and press the set button. You should see the white paper image you just photographed or rotate the quick control dial left or right to display that image, then press the set button. Press the shutter button or menu button to exit. Then press the white balance button. Then turn the main dial to scroll through and highlight the custom settings displayed on the LCD. A tip, this white balance setting will remain in effect during all Creative Zone settings until you change it. Another tip, if you shoot in raw file mode as previously discussed, you can modify the white balance later by using the Canon EOS Digital Solution software that came with your camera or by using Adobe Photoshop. You can measure light by using your camera's light meter in manual mode. This will weigh most heavily the center portion of your image. 
by using a long focal length lens or zoom lens in telephoto position and measuring the light on each part of your photo frame or subject, you can get a sense for how bright or dark the various areas are. If an area is too bright, it will be clipped by the image sensor and appear completely white. If an area is too dark, it will appear grayish and full of noise. When light shines directly onto your subject from a bright lamp or other source, it can create stark contrast and pronounced shadows. Usually, it's more flattering to your subject to shoot under cloud cover, in the shade, or with reflected or diffused light, such as when light reflects off an umbrella or shines through silk. The direction of the light will impact the end result. Study and experiment with placing your subject or bouncing or reflecting light so as to achieve the look that you're after. By shining a bit more light on one side of an object than another, you can create an illusion of three dimension, which is important for good two-dimensional images. The greater the contrast between the light and dark portions, the more dramatic your photo will be. As discussed previously, a great photo will show a full range of light from highlight to shadows as shown in the histogram of that image. Direct your subjects and light your scene if possible until you can achieve a great balance of highlights, mid-tones, and shadows in your picture. Use backlight to create silhouettes when desirable. Use either auto exposure compensation in any creative mode or the manual mode to achieve this. You can review those sections at any time by pressing the skip chapter backwards button on your DVD remote. Simplify your picture and background. A great photo is often simple. It requires patience to get just the right shot sometimes. To direct the viewer's eyes and to make a picture interesting to look at, notice the lines, shapes, and textures of your subject and apply composition principles in a way that will accentuate these things. Sometimes a great picture is waiting for you in the patterns and repetitions of daily life that are often unobserved. By showing the scale of subjects in frame, you can make a photo more informative and even awe-inspiring. And finally, use foreground objects as natural frames to enclose and give contrast to your primary subject. There are several advanced features of your camera that we'll preview now, but we'll go into more detail in the advanced DVD. Now, in each case, these advanced features are only available in the Creative Zone exposure modes. The first advanced features that we'll preview are the autofocus or AF modes. By selecting an AF mode, you can determine how your camera will focus. There are three modes to choose from. One Shot, AI Servo AF, and AI Focus AF. One Shot. This mode should be used when you're photographing a stationary subject. As long as the shutter is depressed halfway, your focus will stay fixed on whichever focus point was selected. Keep in mind that the Focus Lock feature only works in this AF mode, which is a good reason alone to select this focus mode sometimes. Also, this can be used with auto or manually selected focus points. AI Servo AF is the best mode, however, to select if you're taking pictures of moving objects. While the shutter is halfway depressed, 
AI servo mode will continually track a moving object using multiple focus points if necessary, continually changing the focus as necessary at any time to take one or more shots. Again, please note that these advanced features cannot be used in the basic zone exposure modes. Rather, basic zone modes will automatically be set by the camera to a likely appropriate AF mode, such as the AI Servo AF mode when using the sports setting. AI Focus AF is the best mode to use if you think the object will remain stationary but might move once you've depressed the shutter. This mode starts in one-shot mode behavior but will automatically change to AI Servo if the object moves and requires refocusing of the lens. These modes all require that the lens is being operated in autofocus rather than manual focus mode, and all of these modes allow you to have the camera select an autofocus point or for you to manually select one. A second set of advanced features that we'll preview at this time are the drive mode features. Drive mode allows you to determine how the shutter will respond to your pressing the shutter button, taking just a single shot, taking high-speed continuous shots, that's five shots or frames per second, fast compared to most SLRs, taking low-speed continuous shots, that's three shots or frames per second, the maximum speed of many SLRs, Taking just a single shot, 10 seconds after pressing the shutter button. This is called self-timer, allowing you to step into the shot or to simply keep your camera very still at the time the shutter releases. Icons within the LCD will tell you how many continuous shots in a row your camera is currently capable of. As a general rule, you can do more if shooting smaller JPEG formatted pictures than you can by shooting large RAW formatted pictures. Another tip, if your battery is low, your camera will not fire off shots quite as fast as it would if your battery were fully charged. While you can't control the camera manually in sports mode, the camera will automatically be set in high-speed continuous mode if you select the sports setting. Again, this advanced feature cannot be controlled unless using the creative zone exposure modes. Another of the advanced features that we'll preview at this time are the metering modes. These allow you to determine to some degree how the camera will determine exposure. The first is evaluative. It will evaluate the entire frame to determine exposure. After selecting the main subject, the camera will look at background lighting, foreground lighting, and automatically determine the exposure. You'll want to use this mode generally. It is the camera's standard metering mode and is used in most basic zone settings. The second is partial metering. This will measure only the center 9% of your viewfinder to determine exposure. Use this for backlit situations to ensure that your subject is properly exposed rather than silhouetted. The third is spot meter. This will weigh only the center 3.5% of your viewfinder. This mode is invaluable when you want to determine proper exposure for just a part of your subject or scene. Finally, the center weighted average meter. This will weigh the center most heavily, but will average in the exposure needs of the rest of the frame as well. This is great for shooting a bride at her party, where the bride in the center of the frame is the most important subject, but the surrounding individuals should be appropriately measured as well. The last advanced feature that we'll preview in this DVD is the Auto Exposure Bracketing feature, or AEB feature. 
Exposure bracketing allows you to take one photo at the proper exposure, another at a higher exposure, and a third at a lower exposure, thus ensuring that you will have properly exposed your shot. Depending on the drive mode that you've selected, such as high-speed continuous shooting, you need only to press the shutter once to have all three shots fired off. You can bracket the proper exposure by two stops, plus or minus, using one-third stop increments. This feature is used extensively by pros to overcome the most noticeable downside of using digital cameras. Lighter and darker areas of digital photos capture a markedly smaller amount of detail than do film. By bracketing a shot and opening all three exposure versions in Photoshop, pros will combine the shots erasing all but the best detailed and exposed versions of each shot. The final product is a much more detailed photo. The flash opens automatically in the basic zone modes. This DVD will cover only briefly flash usage in the creative zone modes. First, you must manually open the flash if you want to use it in the creative zone modes. Consider using the built-in flash for portrait photography, even outdoors, to catch a wonderful light reflection from the eye or to fill shadows. To use the flash in the creative zone mode, simply press the flash button. Turn on the red eye reduction feature in your menu to pre-flash a beam of light that will dilate the pupil of your subject and allow the main flash not to be reflected as red color in the eyes. A tip, your subject must be more than one meter away or else your lens may block some of the light from the flash. Another tip, don't forget to set your white balance to flash when using the built-in flash. Finally, when using the flash, you can use AE lock, just as you might without using the flash. Picture styles are menu settings you can use to adjust the color of the picture to suit your taste. Standard for vivid, sharp, and crisp images. Portrait for nice skin tones. Landscape for vivid blues and greens. Neutral for natural colors and more subdued images. Faithful is more advanced for use under 52K lights for color metrically matching the subject's color. Monochrome for black and white images. While this DVD does not go into details of the picture styles feature, practice with them and even adjust or customize your own to see what you prefer under differing situations. Please look for our advanced tutorial DVD which will show you many more tips and tricks for taking great photos of people and nature. It will also discuss digital workflow issues, how to manipulate your photo images using Adobe Photoshop, and ways to archive your photos such as burning them to CD. You will also learn to enjoy and share your photos in new ways by creating video photo montage DVDs.